Hello everyone. Today we're going to cover some radio buttons, group box, switch statements. Here I've already built out our form that we're going to use. Uh, I'll show really quick how it gets built. We just dropped a couple of radio buttons in. We dropped a group box. We dropped a group box. We dropped radio buttons into it. We dropped a, a regular button and we dropped a label. So those are some of the controls that we're using. You can always use a little search function up here to find the name of a control if you know the name of it already. Uh, one other detail I want to show is my naming convention. So here I have the name of the radio button and the text. So the text is yes, which is what the user sees. The name is radio button yes. I definitely recommend using that radio button part first. Typically it'll just increment one, two, three, four, five, but I would recommend changing that number to something a little more logical which helps you develop your code and remember where code is. This group box is very important for the radio buttons because now they're linked so you need that group box here to force one selection. If we didn't have this group box I would be able to select all of them and I wouldn't be able to unselect them. Here the group box says these three radio buttons are linked. And then we added a display button. Right now it doesn't do anything because we have no code. And then the label. You'll see that the label is hidden because I've toggled the visible field. I've changed the boolean on the visible field. So let's look at that real quick. Visible is false. So I clicked on the label here and I went to the visible field here. It's false. So that's another property that's really useful. We can toggle the visible field and it hides the label. And when we click display, it's going to display the label. We're going to code that and we're going to code show which value has been selected. We're going to use a switch statement to show which value has been selected. So let's jump into that. The first thing we need to do is we're going to double click our controls here because we want code to run when a control is selected. So the first one, let's double click display. So now we have this function, this method is going to run when the user clicks display. We also want methods to run when they click the radio buttons not necessarily required but for this example that's how we're gonna run it so this will keep stuff pretty straightforward and simple so let's double click yes is double click gonna work okay it's not gonna work no oh, it did work it's just not it's not auto populating my function, unfortunately. Yeah, so this is the function that's going to run. Double click should work. It probably is not working on my side because I double clicked and, I, and then I deleted it. But I have the code right here, so I'm going to I'm going to copy and paste the code that we're expecting here. Double click should work for you though. I'm going to just comment these out, hide them real quick. So when you double click, I would expect this to show up, the no and the maybe. I renamed these radio buttons, which is why they have this name here. Next, let's explore what this is all going to do. So I want, I'm going to, how am I going to store which value the user has selected? So let's break that down. When the user clicks one of these radio buttons, I want to store that data. I need to store it somewhere. 
And, and the way we do that is one way to do that. There's many ways to do that. We don't even need to store it. You could potentially just look it up when the button display click is going. But for simplicity, let's store the value. So let's create a string to store the value. I've made the string private. That's a good default. I would default to naming stuff private because we'll get into that later. But private and then we have a string here which is going to store our value. I've given it a default value which is just an empty string and that's what I've commented out here. We have these radio button values. So now this variable is going to store this value if the user clicks this checkbox yes, this value if the user clicks this checkbox no, this value if this person if the user clicks this radio button not checkbox excuse me radio button maybe and then we can look up this value at a later point in time to change that res that label that says result right there we're going to do that with the display button click so these events here they work just like the display button it's the checked change event. So anytime this changes, this value, this code will run. So the minute I click no, this code runs. The minute I click maybe, this code runs. And we can observe that using a breakpoint. I will show that really quick. So let's put breakpoints. all along our, our check events. So this changed and then this changed. So now our value is no. It went from yes to no. Let's click maybe. So it's running this, but then it's running this. As we see how it's changing, it's updating the radio button value. Where are our local variables? Should be visible. Radio button value. I'd like to see the value. Unfortunately, we're not able to see it unless I, um, we could watch the value. But let's not get sidetracked too far here. All right, so this is a very simple way to update the code. It's not the cleanest code, but it's very intuitive. The problem that I'm seeing right now as we're going over it, it's running both this one and this one. We'd prefer to not run both. For instance, it sees that yes has changed, and it sees that no has changed. So it runs both. Really, we just want it to run once. It's running it. It's running both the yes button and the no button if I change from yes to no. We'll optimize the code later though. So now let's build our button display click. So we're going to use a switch statement here. The first thing we need to do before we build a switch statement, we want to show this label here, right? label result is currently visible false let's show visible true so now the label whenever the person clicks display this label is going to show what is it going to show right now it's going to show it's going to show what's currently there which is result we haven't changed the value the text value of label result so that's what we're going to do with a switch statement which is very similar to if else so let me copy this code in to optimize our time and show you how this code is going to run. So it says this is not, that error is weird. I would have expected that to go away. It's saying the value is never used, but it's clearly used right here. Okay. 
switch statement here is going to evaluate radio button value. So this right here, this radio button value, it's going to look for each case here. Yes, no, and maybe. So here, the yes case would be assigned to radio button value. And then when we click button display, the program will flow through label result equals true. And then it's going to use the switch statement. It's going to say, OK, what's the value of radio button value? If we had it at yes, then it's looking for case of yes. If we had, if the va value is no, it's going to look for case of no. If we have radio button value maybe, it's going to look for case of maybe. And in each instance, we update the value of label result. This default case is what it will do if none of these are, are true. If radio button value doesn't equal yes, it doesn't equal no, it doesn't equal maybe, then it's going to run this default case. One important detail is this capital letter is important. It is case sensitive when it comes to evaluating a string. You'd have to code it not to be case sensitive if you wanted to eliminate that, but in this case it is. So that's one important detail to keep in the back of your mind when you're building something like this. So let's run the code, see if uh, everything runs as expected. So here we have Yes, selected, I click display, it shows yes. No, selected, and we display no. Maybe, selected, and it displays maybe. So that's a very simple example of a case switch statement used with some radio check buttons, some radio check button events, the group box, which groups our radio buttons. And this is what we would call a class variable. But that's not the important part of our lesson. That's just to store the data here. Uh, and we'll optimize this code at a later point to be a little more logical. But this is probably the easiest way to understand a switch statement and be introduced to group box radio buttons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.